Alright, Dad, what game are we going to play today? We are playing Splendor today. Do you like Splendor? I do like Splendor. It's a nice family game. Uh, it's a fun little game. As you can see, it's about gems. We've got a lot of gems going on in here. In fact, actually, Splendor is about the Renaissance. We are rich merchants, and we are getting transportation methods and mines and resources to build up, earn prestige points, and the person with the most prestige points is going to win the game, like so many. How do you play? Uh, well, let me show you. So these are some development cards. As you can see over here, there's different stages. So we got kind of like a level one, level two, level three. What's on the cards, this tells us how many prestige points is which is what we're after. We want to get the most prestige points. This tells you what the card costs to buy. So these up here are going to cost more than these in level two and down in level one. You'll see these cost a little bit less, but some of them don't get prestige points. What they do give are gems. You're going to get, those are going to be some gem values as well. And so you'll be getting these cards along the way. Uh, and then up here, you'll see these are actually square. So on the cost, you'll see a circular cost. Those are going to be the cost of gems. Up here is going to be square, meaning you're going to re it's going to require these cards to acquire these, which I'll show you in a little bit. These are randomly put out. There's others that could be out in a game. The number of players plus one. So this is set up for a four-player game, and I'll show you quickly how you play. On your turn, you can either purchase a card if you're able to, or you could reserve a card for a future purchase, or you can get some gems. Most likely to start the game, since you don't have any gems, you'll start out that way. So there's two ways to do it. You can either take two of one color gem, or you could take three of different color gems. So maybe I'll take a white, a red, and a brown, for example. So that would be turn one, then turn two, and that's how you get gems. You cannot get this gold gem except for a special instance. So let's say, for example, that I have uh, purchased these. Then next time around, I'm actually going to take a couple of browns. I can never have more than 10 gems at a time, which makes it very tight. As you'll see right here, this one requires 7 and 3. So that's going to require 10 gems. But most likely, I'm not going to get 7 gems that way. That's where these gems come in. So let me show you. So now on my next turn, let's say I'm looking at this card. I can spend my two blue and two brown, and then I will take that card. So I'll take it into my stack. We'll replenish that, see what else comes up. Let's say we've gone a little bit farther along, and now let me get a few more here. Let's say that I have bought these, as you can see over here. So now on my turn, these are like permanent gems. So if I look at this card here, this card requires two whites, two reds, and three browns. Well, I've already got two reds, so every time I can just use these two reds for two reds there. I've already got one white, so I'm only going to need one other white. That'll get me the two whites. Three browns? I've only got one brown, so maybe next time I will take two browns for my turn. And now I'll be able to spend three browns, two reds, I don't have to get rid of the cards, and two whites. There's one, and there's another one, and I can get this card. Because that one has a prestige point on it. So that's how I can go about buying cards. The other thing you can do to get cards is you can reserve a card. Let's say that I'm very interested in this card because it costs five. I don't yet have seven gems. I've got three red ones over here, which is helping me get close. I've got one here, so it gets me up to four. I don't have any browns yet, but I know somebody else is going to want to take that card. I can reserve it. So instead of buying it, I will just take the card, and I will take a gold coin when I reserve a card. This comes into my hand, or essentially face down. I don't get to use it yet. And I can do that. I can have up to three cards reserved. So later in the game, if I've built up and I've got some more gems such as this, and I want to actually use this or buy it, now I can develop it. I can spend these three. I've got three more red, and I've got two more brown. So I'm very close. I can't buy it quite yet. But say I had reserved another card as well, and I would picked up two wilds, or two golds. These are wilds. So now that could be a fourth red, and that could be a third 
brown. And so now I can turn those in to actually use this card. And that goes out in front of me and it gives me five prestige points. Pretty handy way to do that, right? So you're gonna be building up more and more, getting more of those, making it easier to buy these along the way. Okay, so those are the things you can do and that's how you get a gold coin is by reserving those. Then up here, these are gonna be dependent upon the card you get. So once you acquire it, so for example, I've got three reds already. I've got one green. If I were to have a couple more greens and say that I've got Let's find out where it is. Say that I've got a third brown. So now, as soon as I play this one down, and I've got three browns, three reds, and three greens, I now qualify to be visited by this noble. He comes over, and I get his points as well. So now that gives me three, six, seven, nine, ten, thirteen. And with that five, that puts me up at eighteen. Whew, most likely I'm going to win, because the game ends on the round in which someone gets 15 points. So by me getting these two points on that turn, there's four points. So I was sitting at 14, I buy this card, puts me at 15, I get this bonus as well, that actually puts me ahead at 18, which is great. So as soon as someone hits 15, you finish that round, and then you see who's got the most points, uh, and that's the winner of the game. And that's all there is to it. Sounds easy. Yeah. Well, it is in the sense that it's easy to play because you're just getting gems, you're getting cards, you're building those up, and I think that's why it's a good family game is because it's easy to explain. They're simple cards. The other thing that's great about it is turns go rather quickly. So I just take some gems, the next person goes, he takes some gems, the next person goes, he buys a card, next person. So the play goes rather fast, goes quickly, you're building up pretty quickly, but all along, you're trying to figure out how to get to those points. How can I get that five prestige point card? Well, I can reserve it and pay for it later. How do I get up to these so I can get these bonus points from these noble visits? So you're looking at what the requirements are. You're trying to find out what gems can build up to it. But the other thing that's interesting is depending on the number of players, you'll remove some of these gems. So if you're playing with three players, some of these gems are gonna be gone and out of the game which keeps it tight and interesting because you're not gonna be able to get everything you want and someone's gonna buy a card before you want to so you'll have to adjust your strategy on the fly. So it's, it's really good because it keeps you thinking along and it moves along rather fast and it's a pretty little simple strategy game. All right, what would you rate this? I would rate it a 3.75 out of five. So a good solid game for the family. All right, thanks. Yep.